I'm Dusty, and I want to take you on an adventure. Today, I want to take you to the wreck of the Lauren Castle, a tugboat built the decade before the First World War, which sank at night in Travers Bay on November 5, 1980. It should have been a routine trip, leaving Omina Bay and heading to Traverse City, just 20 miles to the south. The Lauren Castle was in front, towing the disabled tanker Amico, Wisconsin, and the William C. Selvick was tied to the stern of the disabled tanker, acting as a brake to help control the speed and momentum. As they neared the halfway point of the journey, the captain of the Lauren Castle noticed that the Wisconsin was no longer tracking behind his tug. It had swung to starboard, tightening the tow cable, which began to pull the tug in an arc on the port side of the tanker until the stern bounced against the tanker's hull, much like a truck jackknifes on a slippery road. She soon found herself being pulled sideways and backwards as the momentum of the larger ship took over. This is known as tripping the tow. Quickly, the tug's stern was forced below the water. A quick-thinking crewman used his hatchet to cut the tow line, but it was too late. The Lauren Castle managed to right herself for a moment, but then listed to starboard and quickly began to sink. Only seconds later, she was gone. There were four people on board, but only three survived. The chief engineer, William Stephen, went down with the tug, and his body was sadly never recovered. The first view that we're greeted with is the stern of the vessel on the port side, which is the left. We see invasive gobies skittering across the bottom and the invasive quagga mussels covering literally every surface of the tug. The vessel sank in nearly 400 feet of water and it was never salvaged. It wasn't seen again until a team from Northwestern Michigan College discovered the precise wreck site and filmed it in 2010. The official accident investigation report was not able to determine exactly why the tug went down. The bright lights of my ROV illuminate the back deck of the ship and give us a good clear glimpse of what remains down there. An average car headlight is between two and 4,000 lumens. Well, I've got 16,000 lumens in use right now. If it wasn't for these bright lights, we wouldn't be able to explore this wreck at all. Sitting nearly 400 feet deep, it sits in total darkness. At the smokestack area, we start looking up and see a toppled mast and the faint light from far above. As the pilot house comes into view, we see what appears to be an open door. At this point of the dive, my legs are actually trembling due to the depth, the darkness, and the very high risk of losing the ROV if I get stuck. This open door looks into the galley, where two crewmen were said to be spending time in between checking the tow rope. It's possible that this open door contributed to the sinking. We can tell by the way that it's secured that it was open when the tug went down. These boats often have long lives. Here the green from her last repainting is peeling away to show colors from a previous life. Next we head up to the pilot house, being careful and looking around for anything that can get us tangled. Better watch that bent mast. As we approach the windows, we can see there's glass on the left side still. Here we can see the bright lights of the ROV reflected in the single remaining pane of glass. Working our way to the bow of the boat, we see the H bit. It's pretty easy to guess where it got its name. In the background, we see a ladder. That's how the captain and crew got up to the pilot house. The bow, with a fender attached for pushing, sits in the muddy lake bottom. It looks like the boat settled gently onto the lake bed. The silt is smooth and it doesn't look as if it was plowed into at a great speed. 
and the hull looks completely intact. Finding the Lauren Castle had been on my list for quite some time, and although it was found previously, the coordinates were never made public, so I set out to find it and film it on my own. This is a good reminder that working on the Great Lakes can come at a steep cost in both money and lives. It's time to say goodbye as we follow the tether back to the surface. Thanks for joining me on this exciting adventure to film the Lauren Castle. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing with your friends or support me on Patreon. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.